Hi guys, it's Beth. Welcome back to my channel. In today's video, we're going to do something a little bit different and I'm going to give you a bit of an overview of some tips and tricks for decorating and cluttering and that kind of thing in The Sims 4. This has been requested by a couple of people, um, one of them being my friend Nicola, who is my uh, <laughs> real life friend who's just started playing The Sims um, during lockdown, which I think quite a few people probably have. And she had asked me for some tips on how I do some of the things that you might see me doing in speed builds. So I said I would put together a little video um, and I thought it would be useful to share for anyone else who might be new to The Sims, who might want some ideas of kind of how you can really get the best out of the game when you're decorating. So um, we're going to kind of start right at the start with some basics and then, yeah, we're going to move on to something a bit more complicated, I guess. So to start with, I guess, first of all, what we'll do is go through keyboard shortcuts. So um, in terms of your the tools that you have in the game, this is the toolbar at the top here that you can see. So you have the select tool, the eyedropper tool, the design tool and the sledgehammer. Those are kind of the four key um, tools. And you can see there when you hover over that each of them has a keyboard shortcut. So you press H for the select tool, E for the eyedropper, R for the design tool and K for the sledgehammer tool. I would say that getting to grips with the keyboard shortcuts has made a massive difference in my building. I would have previously have always used um, these shortcuts and the same applies for these as well. So this is for um, also going up and down a floor and then for the walls up and down. Now that I am playing, I will say it makes a difference playing on a desktop with a mouse rather than playing on a laptop, but I would now use um, page up and page down to go up and down a level and uh, home and end to put the walls up and down. So that just using those shortcuts and the keyboard shortcuts really makes things a lot easier. Um, in terms of what you can do with these shortcuts, if you are, we'll actually go over to um, have another build here, which is a very simple sort of bedroom. Um, and basically what you can do with these tools, if you were to select E, which is the eyedropper, you can then basically clone any object. So if I like this bedside table, but I realized I was missing one on this side, I would just clone it and then I have another one that I can then put down, just like that. Um, the other thing that you can do if you know you're going to be placing more than one of something is that if you are putting something down, if you hold sh the shift key, you can put down as many of them as you want and they don't disappear. So this is really handy if you are placing, let's say, um, some plants, for example. So I was going to place down like some bushes or some flowers and I didn't want to have to keep going back in and select them. I knew I was going to do a load of landscaping. I could just hold down shift and put down as many as I want and that makes things much faster. So that is a little trick on that. Um, and then another one which I think is probably quite underutilised is the design tool. So to get the, to get to the design tool, um, you press R or click on the, the shortcut, whatever you prefer, and you can then change um, like the colour of the design of anything that you want. So if I decided that I didn't want this bed to be this colour, I can just flick through and choose various options. Same goes with this. You can do this with almost anything. Um, it doesn't really work on build items, as you can see, but um, on like furniture it does. And then it's also really handy for things like pictures. So you can choose any swatch that you want. Um, and it works on things like, if we go back over here, my little pre-made sets that I've got, um, also works on things like kitchen counters as well. Um, and on fridges and on microwaves, like it can really be used on pretty much most things, plant pots. So yeah, design tool is super helpful for most things. And then the sledgehammer tool, which is accessed by pressing K or selecting it up here. Basically, rather than going in, picking up something, dragging it and deleting it, you can just pick up the sledgehammer and get rid of it like that. So that's kind of those initial tools and shortcuts. I know that is like super basic, but in case anyone is really brand new with the game and doesn't really know how to use any of the shortcuts or knows what they are for, what these icons mean, that's what they all do. Um, and then, yeah, as I say, you do have the shortcuts for the floor up and down and the walls up and down. One thing I would say that makes a massive difference when you go into the camera controls is that you have the Sims 4 camera and the Sims 3 camera. With the Sims 3 camera, if I press down the scroll wheel on my mouse, I can do like all of this kind of stuff. Um, or if you press control and the up arrow or control and the down arrow, this is how I used to do it on a Mac when I didn't have a mouse to, to use when I was playing on the laptop. And then you can use the full stop and the comma keys to rotate this way, or you can just use a scroll wheel on the mouse. With the Sims 4 camera, you can't uh, rotate up and down. You're like kept at this angle the whole time. 
um, and if you press the scroll wheel you can move side to side. Presumably they figure that people want to play at this angle, but I cannot figure out why this would be a thing, so if you're struggling to get the game to do what you want, then definitely turn the Sims 3 camera on, it makes a massive difference. Um, some other quick camera, like, or, um, sorry, some other quick keyboard shortcuts before we carry on. Um, if you press T, it takes you into top down view. So if you're trying to figure out a floor plan and things like that, if you hit T, it takes you into that view really quickly, which is handy. And then if you are building, if you press B, that takes you into the wall tool. So it's a really quick shortcut for the wall tool. Another quick thing while we're on walls is if you have drawn a wall and then you decide you don't want it, rather than you could get the sledgehammer out and like sledgehammer each individual piece. Um, or what you can do is if you have the build tool selected, you can press and hold control and then just drag back along and it'll delete the wall. So once you've drawn it, press control and draw back and it just deletes that section. It also works for a section in like in the middle of a wall. So yeah, that's quite handy. So press control if you want to kind of delete any wall sections. Um, so I think that is kind of the basic shortcuts that you maybe need to know about. We're now going to go into um, some of the tips about decorating and some of the cheats that you can use to help with that. So the first one that is a major thing is move objects. So um, I've not had move objects on yet when I've been placing this stuff. So you can see, for example, this little group of items over here. So without move objects on, what you can see is if I try and place this here, these items go red, so they can't intersect. Now, if you've watched any of my speed builds, you'll see that I'm quite often placing stuff really close together, gathering stuff up. If you try to play kind of our build like this, nothing ever kind of looks natural. Even this, this is as close as I can get to that. Now, like that is kind of snapping. Um, one thing you can do in terms of free placement is to hold down the Alt key, and that stops things from snapping to the grid. Um, I actually have the grid off at the moment, which is another shortcut you can use if you press G on the keyboard, it turns the grid on or off. Um, but yeah, so if you hold down Alt, you can free place, but it still doesn't like being, I can get it rather than there, I can get it to here before it goes red. So that's as close as I can get it. If we go into the con the, the cheat bar, which um, you access by pressing Control, Shift and C, and then we type bb.moveobject, and my microphone is in front of my keyboard, so it's impossible for me to type, you get a notification here that the move object cheat is on. Now I can place this wherever I want. So I mean, you're not going to do this, like have it cutting in half, but like you could do. Um, you could literally place things wherever you want. It doesn't, it doesn't stop you. So I could have this right over here. I could have this right snuggled up next to it. And then I could have this plant right over here beside it. And instantly we have like a little grouping of stuff which looks so much better. Um, another thing that you can do with this is to actually place things inside each other. Um, so if you wanted to place things, for example, I have this vase here. Let's say that I really like this plant, but I don't like this vase very much. Because I have move objects on, what I can do is place the vase where I want it, I can pick up this plant, and I can just drag it inside this other plant pot. Now this is not a great example because this plant pot's actually too big at the bottom and you can see it. But imagine that it wasn't, it looks, you know, I have this plant on a different plant pot now. So yeah, imagine that this <laughs> imagine that this plant fit in this plant pot. Um, we'll actually come back. There's a way that you could you could do this better, and I'll come back to that that in a minute. But for now, um, this is kind of alt placement. And another thing that you can do when you have alt turned on is um, let's take this little basket for example. If I want to rotate this, and I use the full stop and the comma key to rotate this, it kind of snaps in these options in these kind of directions. So you have basically like zero degrees, forty five degrees, ninety degrees. Um, what you can do is free rotation, so same as before with holding down Alt to place things. If you, um, you can also rotate things by holding down the left mouse button and dragging them around, but again it snaps. If you hold Alt and do that, you can free rotate and it doesn't snap to anything. This is a huge like game changing thing because if you, if you rotate something kind of exactly how you want it, like it looks, sometimes it looks so much more natural than having to have things snap to whatever the game wants to rotate them. Um, so yeah, you've got a lot more freedom of what you do. So basically holding Alt allows you to free place and free rotate things. Um, so yeah, I am definitely a big fan of that and I always play with move objects on and using Alt to place most things. I don't really let things snap that much, I would say. So that's a bit of an intro to the move objects cheat. Um, now, something else which is kind of related to move objects is, for example, I have the, this sink and these kitchen counters and I have the like kitchen towel and then I have the soap. This is like the the cabinets do have multiple slots, which is good. So things don't just like stand in the middle and stay there. You can place them closer, but like this is kind of far away. And then this is as close as I can get this. And this is kind of far away. Now, if I pre hold down alt, it still snaps. So I can put it here, but it's kind of far forward. 
if I try and put it at the back, oh actually this one lets me do it, <laughs> but quite a lot of the time what you'll find is that if I try to place something like this, it, it'll snap back again. So the way to get around that, and what I would do, is just move this counter out of the way. I would place whatever I wanted on the counter to get it to be the right height, and then you can move it off of that counter. You can alt place it to wherever you want it to be, and what I could even do is alt place the soap like in front of it. I could uh, use alt to freely rotate it if I wanted to. Then I can put the counter back, and the items are like more naturally kind of cluttered next to the sink, and it looks a bit more realistic. Um, now, if you wanted to take that kind of even further, you could totally add more stuff. Um, so let's say I wanted to add, I have no idea, like laundry detergent or something again, that's going to snap. And then I want to add, um, I don't know, a basket, let's say, and maybe in the basket there will be, uh, will we add like a plant or something? I mean, you can tell I'm just doing this bit off the cuff. Um, let's say we're going to have this little plant. So again, this plant doesn't fit in this plant pot, right? Because they're, or in the basket because they're snapping. So again, what you could do is just move this out of the way. This is now at the right height because it's snapped onto here. Um, if you kind of try and do it, let me place something else down. If I put this on the floor, say, and then try and place it like in this space, it'll be on the floor. So you want to put it up on the counter first and then when you pick it up, it'll stay at that height. I hope that makes sense. So yeah, I'm going to pick up this like fabric softener, whatever this is meant to be. And see, because this counter is here, it keeps snapping back. So if that happens, I just move it a bit further away so it doesn't snap. Basically, the items want to, if, if the slot's within a certain distance, the items will try and click to it. So just move them out of the way if that happens. And then let's say I want this little basket over here. And then I want this little plant in this basket. Super cute. And then I can just pop the back. And we're sorted. So opportunities are endless. But yeah, basically, if you're trying to get things to be cluttered on a counter um, and the counter's kind of in the way, then uh, just place things down and move it back. And another example where I would use this quite a lot would be in the bedroom. So let's say we have um, like a dresser. Um, and this is the matching dresser for this, but it's the wrong colour. <laughs> um, so yeah, let's say we have this dresser. Now again, this will let you play stuff on it, but it will have slots. So I'm just going to grab some complete random stuff for the sake of this. And this is all going to be, oh, the bear does fit. Okay, so we have a bear, we have a pumpkin. Um, I have a little, like, so that's the two slots. Basically, I can't put anything else on here. So what I would do in this case is I would move the dresser out. So just the same as we did before, these are now at the right height because they're already there. So I would just pick him up, move him back to where I wanted him to be, pick him up. I could have him like over here snuggled behind him maybe. I think these are going to be a bit too far over now, but... And these things do kind of take a little bit of trial and error sometimes. And then I'm going to pop him up here and then move him back. And let's maybe give him something that's not weird figurines. Um, one of these maybe, and let's say one of these and one of these, some plants. So I just pick this up, put it here, pick this up, put it here. Again, maybe I want to, to um, oh my. I want to rotate it a little bit and then put this one here, pop the dresser back. Now, I mean, I've, <laughs> I've overestimated the size of this dresser a little bit. So what I'm going to do is pull this forward a little bit. And again, you see that's too close now, so it's snapping. Pull this forward a little bit and then pull this in behind so that it's not going to be hanging over the edge. And there you go, you have like a really cluttered, albeit bizarrely decorated um, dresser where you actually only have these two slots. So um, yeah, once you get things to the right height, just move the surface out of the way, free place things wherever you want them to be, you can clutter this up as much as you want, and then you can place it back. The only thing about this is because the slots are not filled, your sims don't really realise that there's things there, so they might end up trying to like put a coffee cup or something down on that surface, but... I don't know how often your sims were really going to put a coffee, cup, a coffee cup down on a dresser, so I don't think it's that big a deal. But yeah, so in terms of kind of cluttering surfaces or placing multiple objects, that is how you do that. Um, and that also kind of leads me on to the next thing, which is about um, some other tricks that you can do with um, move objects, which is sizing objects up and down and also raising and lowering objects. So I'm going to show you an example of both of those with this plant plot again. So as you could see, Obviously, because we have move, move objects on, I can put them both in the same tile, but this woven or like, I don't know what this is meant to be, terracotta plant pot is too big. So what you can do to size things up and down is uh, that you use the square bracket keys. So for me, these are next to P on my keyboard. Um, I'll have all of these on the screen, hopefully, so you'll be able to see what I mean. Um, so the left bracket key sizes things down. So you have a teeny tiny little plant pot, which actually is like super cute. Um, 
and you could have it i'll come back to that actually but you know that's so small you could definitely have it on a surface so you can size it down and you can size things all the way up like there is literally no limit to how big you can make these things and um, it's kind of wild like i don't know why you'd ever want to plant that big but you can if you want to so <laughs> it's still huge so yeah let's say i wanted this to fit in this plant pot and when i put them on the same tile this pot is too big right so if i size it down let's say two it now fits and it's hidden inside the plant pot but it's obviously too small now and you can't see the, the actual like leaves so then what i would do is let me just rescue him from in there so i've sized this down now and it's like a perfect size fits inside the plant pot to be honest with you i'm going to probably make it one bigger and um, you can see the bottom of it a little bit but we're about to raise it up which is going to solve that problem so to raise and lower object you need to use control this bit's really important because um the shortcut is basically control and nine to raise things up and control and zero to lower things down if you just press nine Oh, usually if you just press nine, <laughs> I think it depends on the keyboard. I know on my Mac, at least if you just press nine, your your camera does some crazy stuff. Um, so so don't uh, yeah don't don't press just nine. Um, do control. Uh, so yeah, you can do control and nine to raise things up, and control and zero to lower them down again. So if I raise it up to there and let go, technically this plant is floating inside that plant pot, but you can't see it. It looks like it fits perfectly. Um, and yeah, it's basically a way to get kind of custom plants. So if you like the plant and don't like the pot and vice versa, you can kind of change it around. Um, so that is kind of raising and lowering. And the same can be said for, for example, if I wanted this basket on this counter, because it's some things are meant to be on the floor, they won't snap. So things like the fabric softener is meant to be up on a surface, so it will snap, but this isn't. So the way to go around that is just to raise it up to the height that you want. The issue with this is that it's not always perfect. So sometimes it's going to be floating so that you can't really tell that that's actually floating. So I would go down one and that's pretty much perfect. And then all place and there you go. It's on the counter, which is not kind of where it goes, but it's easy enough to do. Um, and yeah, you can do that for pretty much pretty much anything. You can kind of like raise it, raise it up and lower it down and you can place things wherever you want. So yeah, sizing up and down. And then again, if I say I wanted to, like, I really like that on the counter, but it's a bit big, I just press the left bracket and I can make it smaller um, and, like, place it here. And then let's say I wanted to have its big brother on the floor. I'm going to press E for the eyedropper, select it so I get another one, and then I'm going to press the right bracket to size it up. Now, you would never have a laundry hamper this big, so <laughs> this is really just for demonstration purposes, but let's say that this is what you wanted, then you could totally have it. Um, put the plant there him there i mean again if you wanted this to be huge like go for it <laughs> make a house for a I don't know giant to live in or something but yeah so basically sizing up and sizing down super easy and yeah the other thing i was going to say was with this little plant i love this plant and when you size it down it's super cute but obviously it's a floor plant so it doesn't snap so again what i would do is just raise it to the height that i want it to be and then again i think that might be floating it's kind of hard to tell a lot of the time that's still floating i think um, and you do have to kind of sometimes just get to the right camera angle so that you can tell. Um, yeah, and that's clipping a little bit, but it looks better than when it's floating. And that is so cute, like a little teeny tiny version of that plant. Um, and really easy to do. So those are your shortcuts for raising and lowering and sizing things up and down. Um, while we're talking about kind of raising and lowering things, I wanted to talk, you'll see I've got these shelves here. Um, so if you want to place things on a shelf, quite often what will happen is so this will snap. These shelves particularly have one slot like on the top. But these middle and bottom shelves things don't snap to now if i try and just use the nine key to raise it up it won't work because it's snapped to the counter if i move it off of the counter and use the nine key to raise it up you can see that it works but if i hold alt and try and place it back it will just snap to whatever comes past it i can use i've kind of got it working there but as soon as i pull it out it will jump down to the counter again so again the trick with this is just to move the counters out of the way that are bugging you and you can then place this wherever you want. So I'm going to lower this down and turn it. Now that's one too low, but you get the idea. Pop that there. And then I can put the counters back. So if you're trying to, trying to put things on shelves and they keep like snapping down, then yeah, just to, again, remove the surface out of the way and, and then you can raise and lower things. Another trick sometimes if you are not able or you don't want to move things out of the way, if you just try and fill all of the slots depending on the item I've not found this to be consistent but sometimes it will then stop it from snapping here if this has no more slots free it won't snap and you can raise and lower it but yeah generally just moving out whatever's underneath out of the way means that you can then clutter and you could literally have every inch of this covered with stuff 
Um, you could have stuff on the cooker, you could have like pots and things, you could have whatever you want. Um, so yeah, that's a little bit about sort of free placement of objects and items and uh, kind of clutter and things. And then um, the other thing that I wanted to touch on quickly, which is kind of along the lines of the design tool, so so you can change the colour of these cabinets with the design tool. But something that I think some people aren't aware that you can do, um, basically with the kitchen counters, if I go into, so this is the um, island living counters that I've got, it's this one here, in the like lighter swatch. So the basically the game has auto counters on by default, which means that for the wall counters, or for the normal counters, they are like this. And if I was to place them in some sort of corner, you see what happens there. So like they're in a row, if I turn it this way, it's magically snapped into a corner and you get this little like corner piece with a little handle and everything on it. So that's great because it means when you're building a kitchen it kind of does what you need it to do. But you may be looking at things like this, this is the island counter. So when you go into the island counter it looks like this. Now, again if you do a corner I don't think it actually works in this because they're island counters rather than anything else. Um, it works that way I guess, yeah. So um, again they're kind of on auto counters but you might be wondering like how did I get this round piece or this little like, end piece of the overhang. Basically, when you go into counters, if you go in here, you'll notice there's a little like settings cog and it says automatic counter placement is on. So I click again, it turns it off, and then you can see all of this panel of counters that opens up. So these are for the for the island counters, these are all the options that you get. So you can see I have this little outside corner piece which has like your doors on both sides and a bit more of an overhang. I have a rounded piece which means that you could actually make like a fully rounded um, island if you wanted to. Like that looks awesome. So yeah, that's quite fun. And then the same for these counters. I can have like a corner piece that has like rails and handles and stuff on it. Um, you can have an inside corner piece. You could have just a skinnier end piece or a right hand side end piece. So let's say that I wanted to have a piece on the end here, but I didn't want another full counter. I could just add this little one on and you can see it's not the full, it doesn't come out to the full width of the tile. It's like three quarters basically. And it gives a bit of like a finish to the end of the, the end of the counters, which is quite nice. So yeah, I think a lot of people kind of miss that because it's on by default. You don't ever think to like click on this little icon, but that's what it does. And then the same if you're using wall cabinets, again, you click on this little cog here and you get all these options. So not only do you get like the standard wall unit, but you also get like a short one for, which I often use like above the cooker, or above the sink, if there's not a window there. You get a tall one, which these are quite different. So depending on like what cabinets you're using, the tall ones are completely different. So this one's just like a built-in unit. And um, this one I think also has like dishes in it. This one's like one that you place on top of the counter rather than from floor to ceiling sort of thing. And um, so they're all different and they're all like, like this one's super cute. So yeah, definitely play around, but there's so many counter options that I think if you just use the auto ones, you might wonder how people are getting like stuff like this. And it's all in there. So that is definitely a good a good trick to have. Um, and I have a couple of more things which are maybe a slightly more detailed, and then I want to finish by talking about debug, because I know I'm going to get questions about that. Um, so a couple of things I want to show which are maybe like, are like <laughs> I guess, making new objects out of other things. So basically with move objects on, you can combine any number of things. Um, so for example, you can see here that I have basically like made a fireplace. I like these kind of built-in fireplaces and they don't really exist in the game. All this is, is a wall, like four walls that I've drawn. I've put this fire, I say fireplace, this is actually um, a coffee table, which has the fire in it, which works better because if you put an actual fireplace in here, the Sims have to get to it to light it and they'll just tell you that they can't get to it. Whereas this works more like a light switch you can just turn it on and off and they don't need to actually touch it to do that and it looks like a fireplace. So um, it doesn't provide any of the warmth but also it's not a fire hazard. So um, I use this quite a lot as like kind of a replica for a fire. So yeah, I've literally just built four walls around it and then I've just placed these windows. Now that we can move windows wherever we want, <laughs> um, I've just placed windows on either side and you could have this, um, like my boyfriend did a build recently where he um, had like a sofa on either side or like he had a dining room here and the living room there and like this big fireplace in the middle of the room, which is really cool. So um, yeah, you can totally combine stuff like that. You can also, um, this one is one of my favourite tricks, which I think looks amazing and it looks really difficult, but it's actually not. So this is, looks like a kind of set of French doors, right? But it's actually an archway and then two of this like base game door. And if you want to make it look like the door is open, what you need to do is press B or get your wall tool 
and then we draw a diagonal wall from here to here. And then what we do is we place the door like that so that it's open. And then we just delete the wall. Now because we have move objects on it won't delete the door. And now you have an open door. So that it looks like super complicated but it's totally not. Um, what you can also do is potentially what I should have done there is oh, do that is like move this a little bit closer before I deleted the wall because there was a bit of a gap there. I don't know if you saw that. That's better. So that actually looks like it's open out of the frame now. So yeah, that's a super easy way to make like a door that looks open. Um, really straightforward, not difficult at all. You can do it with different doors and different um, archways. The only thing is you do need the archway or this bit will not be a gap. There'll be a wall here. Um, so it's just trying to find doors which fit inside the archways. Um, so, and I was trying to use base game uh, doors and archers, but you definitely have more options. But I think this looks super effective and yeah, like a little open door, which is really cute. And then one of the other things I want to show you is you'll see I have this wall here. I'm actually going to go ahead and just get rid of this for now because it's kind of in the way. Um, so you might have seen people building like what I would call like an entertainment unit. And it's basically you have like cabinets and then you have a TV in the middle. Now the way that to do this, which kind of appears maybe more complicated first than it actually is, is to use the wall cabinets. I quite often use like to say this dark one. Now they will snap at the bottom, so that's quite handy. Again, you can also make them like the shorter size if you want to, um, or you can use these tall ones. So what I would quite often do is use these tall ones at either side, which looks cool. And then I would use uh, maybe, let's say, the full one at the bottom here, and then the shorter one up at the top. And you've got like a little built-in like TV unit, I guess, right? But it looks a bit weird with the doors and they're not all the same size and everything. Or maybe you've got ones where the back of the cabinet, you want a more sleek like back to it. I'm just going to pop a TV in the middle here so you can kind of get the impression, right? That looks kind of cool. And you could put all sorts of things in here. I've done it with shelves down the side and everything. Now, what you'll notice is that with the, um, with like the floor cabinets, you can just turn them around and place them this way because they're not snapping to anything. They'll just snap to the floor. So that's kind of handy and you maybe would want to do that for the bottom bit here. The only issue is obviously that they have worktops which don't blend in. So what you need to do is take your wall cabinets again. But if I try and rotate them and place them like they will just snap to things. Which is not really what you want. So, and actually I say that, I feel like they would have previously just turned around again. So maybe they've changed something. But yeah, basically what you would be doing is like placing... Let's see if we can do it without, because this might be easier. Is it placing them like that? And then you place the... Yeah, see now, so this is the issue I suppose is that these ones work. So I could go up and turn these around and place that there and place this here. So you're just looking at the back of it. But the, these ones, basically the wall cabinets try and snap to the wall and you can't lower things from their set height. You can only raise them. So I can't get a cabinet in the bottom here. So the solution for this is that you just draw a wall going the other way. And then what I would do is probably delete this wall going this way so I can see what I'm doing. And you just... Basically, it's tricky to see and maybe without the TV there it would be getting on easier here. Um, but what you do is basically just try and get these to snap to the opposite wall, the wall that's now facing us. And um, because they, want, they always want to snap to a wall, then you can put this wall back here. You can come back around, again press control to get rid of this wall here and you have a little complete like built-in TV unit. Um, and I think this looks really effective and people do this in the game and I obviously think how on earth have you done that? Um, but yeah, that's how. And finally, I think one last little thing to finish off with in terms of decorating is clutter and kind of where do you get it. So if you go into decorating, there is um, a kind of clutter section, which is this one here. Also get it from the kids room and there is a lot of stuff in here and um, that's kind of cluttery. So like say a knife block for your kitchen and you've got maybe this like cool bowl. And um, again, this is all depends what packs you've got, but there's not loads. And the trick to really cluttering is to use debug. So it's the last thing we're going to cover before I wrap this up because this video is already getting kind of long. Um, so basically we go into the cheat menu again. You have to have move objects on first. Then we do show hidden. Object, if I can get there, there we go. And then we come down to the search bar and we just type in debug and select any of those ones. And it will open up the debug menu. And now you can see I have a whole host of random stuff that I can place around. Some things snap to counters and some things are on the floor for some reason. 
But again, you could just raise and lower them. Spice bottles, I've got a pan, I've got a spatula, <laughs> I've got a plate, I've got a bowl, um, I've got like a chopping board, which is kind of cute. The only thing is the chopping boards do tend to spoil, which is a bit of a pain. Um, but that one well because there's food on it, this one might not because it's blank. Um, but you have a mixing bowl, uh, like fruit. <laughs> So there's really like no end of the coffee bag is one of the, my favourite things to decorate with. And again, it fits up on the shelf. So you can have a little coffee bag situation. Now, the only downside with uh, debug is that you cannot shift click to place multiple things and you can't use the eyedropper tool either. It'll tell you there's nothing to be cloned. So um, unless you're using a mod, which there is a mod for that. But yeah, with the with the debug menu, you do have to kind of just like select stuff and then remember to put it down. Um, but as you can see, there is a whole host of stuff. I mean, if you ever want you know, like for some alama for any reason. <laughs> um, again, there's like coffee cups, which you'll see I use a lot in like the coffee shop builds and everything. I was using a lot of coffee cups. Some things will disappear. So you try and place food down when you click and like, oh, the food disappears, which is a complete pain. And then for some reason you can't get rid of them. So just avoid placing them at all costs because you can't delete them once you've placed them. Like a plunger in case you ever needed one. Um, a fire extinguisher. <laughs> like, if you're looking for things to make your build like more realistic, this is the place to come. Uh, like tablets, marshmallows, literally like everything you could ever think of, a banana skin. I mean, <laughs> oh, that disappears. See, some of them don't last. Some of them don't like kind of stick around once you've placed them. But yeah, so if you're looking for, for clutter, kind of that's the place to go for it. And then, as I said, you can just basically like alt place to your heart's desire. Um, and sometimes things do this as well, where it says can't find object. This like uh, cocktail shaker especially is really bad for it. And then you can't delete it, which is really helpful. And I don't think you can sledgehammer it either. So in what case I would do is I would just delete that entire counter and then put the counter back if you were stuck with it. Um, but yeah, so that is uh, that is kind of a bit of an intro to debug and how you find the stuff and then again, placing it is just the same as placing anything else. If you want to place it on a counter, just move the counter out of the way. Um, and yeah, I hope that covered at least on the basics. This was, I was going to say a quick video. I'm at like 30 something minutes now, so I'm not that quick, but... Um, I hope this covered maybe some of the basic stuff that you might have seen me doing in a video and thought you're not sure how I'm doing it or what I'm, I'm pressing. I have used the red shelf before, but I've found recently I've actually not been needing it much. I've just been using the kind of raising lowering keys and moving stuff out of the way. So it is helpful sometimes and it doesn't, you know, it doesn't count as CC in your game or anything. So do feel free to download it. And if you want another video on that and the tool mod, I could do that. But I wanted this to be kind of like a beginner slash intermediate like decorating type tutorial so that's what I was aiming for Um I can't really think of anything else that I would need to show or that would be like really important for you to know I think that is mostly the main stuff and um, if you have any questions or comments or anything else you'd like to see then please let me know in the comments down below as always, thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed the video, please give it a big thumbs up and make sure to hit that subscribe button so you don't miss any of my future videos. And I'll talk to you guys in the next one. Bye.